Hi, I'm Amy Hannon, and nothing thrills me more than people and food. I'm a preacher's wife, a mom of three, and I own my own specialty kitchen store. I've kept an open door and a well-stocked fridge, which means I have fed a lot of mouths over the years. So welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Today. Welcome to Cooking Today. We're making steaks today. Don't we love steaks? I mean, it's summertime. These are wonderful, wonderful New York strips that we are gonna rub with a sweet and spicy and rich dry rub before we get a good sear on them. And we're gonna use West Rock Coffee because it's our feature recipe of the day. Coffee just makes everything richer. You know, we add it to our chocolate and it richens the flavor of that, of the chocolate and it gives almost like that little bit of like a, um, kind of a rich, almost like, you know, just a good coffee flavor um, to almost like chocolatey and a little bit bitter, but a little smooth. I just love how it works in with our other seasonings and spices that we're putting in this great rub. And then with our steaks, we're gonna do the easiest fingerling potatoes. That is actually just an Ina Garten recipe. If y'all have ever cooked from, you know, a good cookbook or watched Food Network, you will see Ina Garten's fingerling potatoes. They are absolutely the easiest potato to make. I cannot wait to show you how to do it. It is, it's really, really good. And it is so completely hands off, y'all. You just put it in your brazer and let it cook and go. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful recipe. But let's first start with our rub for our steaks. We are gonna start with four teaspoons of brown sugar. And you know, I love to put brown sugar in my rubs always, or even sometimes in my, mar you know, my marinades because that sweet in it is really what kind of caramelizes and gets really good when you either put them on the grill or you cook them in your skillet. So it's a great little thing to add in. We use brown sugar on here a lot. Then we have smoked paprika. And I have to be careful about talking and scooping this because it gets, it tickles my nose sometimes when I talk and talk and scoop. You can use regular paprika if that's all that you've got. But if you can find a smoked paprika, and usually like in a gourmet specialty store um, or online, then get it. It has got the best flavor. Just really, really, really good smoky flavor. I think you'd really like it. Then we're gonna add in four teaspoons of red pepper flakes for the heat. You know, I said it's kind of a sweet and spicy rub. I was talking, that was three, Timmy tells me. You know, he's the official counter around here. That was four. Red pepper flakes. I love that bite. So, so far we've got, think of all this great flavor we're putting on our steaks. We've got the sweet, we've got the smoky, we've got the heat from the red pepper flakes. And naturally we can't go without garlic, you know, garlic powder. Now if you were wanting to use granulated garlic, you could use granulated garlic if you can get it at your grocery. It's a little bit more specialty, but it is really, really good. Three, four. I just about dried that out, didn't I? Just get a little extra in there. Okay, garlic powder, because you know, garlic makes everything better. It's just delicious. And then we're gonna do four teaspoons of salt. Isn't this easy? I told y'all, four teaspoons of everything. Two, three, four, four teaspoons of pepper. This is just ground black pepper. One, have to be careful with that one. Two, three, four. Doesn't it all sound good, everything that's going in? Let me give this just a little stir. And then, this is really fun and where we get some great depth of flavor. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. We are going to stir in one K-cup, pre-measured for you. It turns out to be about 
I don't know, four to five teaspoons or so of coffee, and I'm using the Rwanda blend because that's the one that we drink all the time, so I always have it on hand, and this is going to make me want to go pour a cup of coffee. Don't be surprised if y'all don't come back here in the second segment, and I'm not drinking a cup of coffee. It always makes me want to have one. So delicious and smooth. So all I'm doing here is pouring in a K-cup. Isn't that so easy? Love it. And did y'all know this? This is so great. West Rock Coffee is available at Sam's Club now by the 80 count. And at my house, where all five of us drink coffee, you know those little 10 and 12 counts, we were burning through those pretty quick at my house. And so for us to be able to get that big box of 80 count has been kind of a lifesaver, if you ask me. Okay. Here we go. So we've made this great little rub. We've got our 10 ounce strip steak sitting at room temperature. You want to let them sit at room temperature for just a little while. Just kind of let them sit out because you really want them to be nice and, you know, not too cold before you stick them on the sear, you know, stick them on. But what we're going to do first is oil these down real quick and rub both sides with our blend and let them camp out. And when we come back, we're going to start on our potatoes. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Hi, welcome back. We're making West Rock Coffee feature recipes today, and it is these spicy, sweet, chili rubbed New York strip steaks. Does that sound delicious? Smells good. This, this rub is fantastic. The smells of that sweet and smoky has like, and coffee has like filled the air in here. It is so good. So let me show you. I went ahead and did one side of our steaks, but I'm going to do the other side. And what we want to do is just a little drizzle of olive oil on each side. And then I've got my rub right here, and I'm just taking that same measure and really crusting it well. And then let me tell you real quick about how I choose to make my steaks. I've done these steaks two different ways. Once I've done it on the grill, and the recipe will include instructions on doing it outside on your grill for sure. But I I really prefer to sear my steaks in, the, in a skillet. I mean, we've done something similar here before. I love the crust that like, a, that, like that flat surface gives a steak. It's so good. So really, that's just how I prefer to do it, which segues me to why I'm coating the outside of the steak, because by Given this steak every inch, all the way from one end, all the way to the other end, and on both sides, by giving it a great rub all the way on both sides of it, when you put it on that flat iron, you know, or whatever you've got, your griddle, your cast iron skillet, when you put it on like that, it is going to create the most fantastic, salty, sweet, smoky crust. And I love a good crust on my steak and on my pork chop and on my tuna fillets. So anyway, that's the reason we're coating this. Now the recipe actually calls for um, four steaks if you were to feed like a family of four. So I actually have a little bit of extra rub than I um, am going to use today since we're just doing the three steaks. So that's why. Okay, I'm going to give these just a little rub on and then we're going to let these sit. We want the rub to sit in the meat and just kind of camp out on it and start to basically just kind of soak in and flavor the, out, the outside of the meat, not just sit on it, but get into it. And so it's going to be really good. We are going to let our steaks sit tight. Now we're going to move on to these easy potatoes. And I'll tell you what's so great about these two is that not only are they really easy to make, but you can kind of use whatever variety you want. I'm choosing to use this really pretty variety of um, fingerling potatoes. And fingerling potatoes are just a variety of small potatoes 
that are bred to grow kind of long and kind of stumpy like fingers. They kind of all look like thumbs if you ask me. See, like kind of some long, long and skinny ones. So they're kind of just a fun shape. You can, of course, do this with like a small red potato or a small yellow potato. That's kind of up to you, whatever you've got on hand. If you have a few red left over from something and a few yellow left over from something and whatever else, mix them up and throw them in. That's kind of what this, you know, little batch looks like anyway. A really fun little blend. So I have washed these off and let them dry. And then I have my brazier over here. And what I'm going to do in my brazier is turn it on about medium or so, medium plus not too high. And then I'm going to give it a drizzle of oil. And then I'm going to drop in a couple of tablespoons of butter. Because you don't have potatoes without butter, right? Aren't they kind of like hand in hand? And what happens is the oil and the butter together combine in that skillet to soften and tenderize those skins just a little bit and still make them just crispy enough that they are delicious. And so what we're gonna do is let this, let me see what I need to grab here. I'll just grab my little wooden here. And I'm gonna let that melt down and get nice and hot. And then all we're gonna do, this is so simple, drop these potatoes in. You don't need to puncture holes in it. You know how sometimes when you make a baked potato, you poke holes in it? We don't need to do that. We're just gonna drop these potatoes right into our brazier and then lit it, shake it, make sure they're coated and let them sit and cook. That's it. I would suggest, I think that this works the best in a really heavy, wide, low pot because you want these to lay out in a single layer and not be piled up on top of one another and it needs to have a lid. And that's very, very important for these potatoes to cook really well. So wide and low, single layer, lid. So when this butter and oil melts down, I'm just gonna drop these in, lid them, and let them sit over medium heat. And then when we come back, we're gonna sear these beautiful steaks. This is Cooking Today. Ice Tea, sponsored by Lipton. Experience the local sounds, sights, and taste of the Fayetteville Farmer's Market. Do you know the producer behind your food? What about how far away your food was grown? Local to us means your food is harvested hours before traveling less than 60 miles to our market. Enjoy music, chef demos, and special events while you shop for locally grown produce, meats, cheeses, flowers, artisan crafts, fine art, and more. Visit us Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on the Square. The Fayetteville Farmer's Market, 100% local and loved. Welcome back. We're making coffee and spicy and sweet and smoky rubbed. That's a long title. That's not really the title, but it's a good description of these strip steaks that we're making today. And I told you I was going to cover those potatoes, but I really wanted you just to see them, what they look like and how I laid them out in a single layer um, in the bottom of my skillet. I can hear them because they've gotten nice and warm over that medium heat. So what I'm gonna do is, well, I'm gonna get a spoon real quick. I wanna roll them around just to be sure they've got a good little coating of the butter and the oil that's in the bottom. I've done a really good pinch of salt on them because you know potatoes need salt desperately. Potatoes need salt desperately. So don't short that, you know, that pinch across your potatoes. Now that they're just kind of coated and I've got my temperature up, all I'm going to do is put my super heavy lid on that and they're going to continue to cook in that pot just like that. And I'm going to kind of keep my ear to them. You know, I always say to kind of cook with your ears. And then just on occasion, I'm going to take my mitts because my pot is going to be really hot and give it a good shake. You know how like when you used to make um, stovetop popcorn? Remember that? Am I old? Surely some of y'all remember that. But you'd kind of get it on there and kind of shake it up and get the oil and the kernels all going. 
We're doing the same thing with our potatoes today, just to kind of keep them from sticking to the bottom, kind of get them coated again in a little salt and um, the oil and all of that. And they cook in somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. That kind of depends on your pot, if your pot is heavy and holds heat. And it also depends on maybe like your, um, the thickness of your potatoes. So if your potatoes are long and skinny, like mine are, they're probably gonna cook a little quicker. If you do more of like the little red, you know, round ones, then they're gonna take a little longer. You just want them to be fork tender and you're all set. Okay, this is so good. I have preheated my big double handle fry pan. I have put just the smallest little brush of olive oil on the bottom. Not enough to fry these things. We just want to be sure that they don't stick. So the oil's going to kind of do a good cover of that. And we're going to cook these with some butter. And before you roll your eyes at me, I actually learned that from a, an iron chef on Food Network. Not personally, although I wish. <laughs> I wish you were here. But that's one of the tricks they say to great restaurant steaks is cooking those steaks in butter. And I always happen to have a little butter, and so we're gonna do that today. So, I'm gonna take my couple of tablespoons of butter and drop those down in there. You wanna do about a tablespoon per steak. And since I'm doing three, we did three tablespoons. And now, I'm moving my steaks that have rested and gotten so nice and pretty. Room temperature with our rub on it. You could actually let them sit for probably as long as an hour and let that rub sink in perfectly fine, probably the better. But for today, oh my goodness, yes, we're gonna set this. Oh my word. Here we go. Doesn't that sound so good? Oh my goodness. So good. Mm -mm -mm. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move my butter around to be sure that all of them have a little flavor on them. Oh my word. They smell so good. Now these particular, this particular cut, they're not as thick as some of the ones that I've used before. So your oven temp, or your, not your temp, but your time, may definitely vary on these. So for instance, we are going to sear these really nicely on both sides on our stovetop for, I don't know, two or three minutes per side till we get a good crust. Then I have a preheated 500 degree oven. I know it's hot, but we want to transfer those over to our line sheet pan. You know how I use these all the time. We want to move those over after our sear to our lined sheet pan. And the reason why is because sometimes when you put the cast iron over into the oven and continue to bake it then, you know, in the pan, that cast iron bottom gets so hot that sometimes the bottom of your piece of meat can turn into kind of like, you know, the bottom of a shoe. And we don't want steaks like that, do we? We want them good and crusty and crisp, but still nice and tender. So we're gonna transfer them once they sear. Your oven time is gonna vary depending on the thickness of your steak and how medium or rare that you would like them. Generally speaking, we would take them out of the oven when they're about between 150 and 160 degrees and they're gonna be perfect after they rest a few minutes. I'm gonna flip both of these steaks, stick them in our oven, I mean, just as easy as that, and shake our potatoes. Beautiful restaurant meal, smells fantastic in here. So we're gonna keep at it. When we come back, we're gonna eat. This is cooking today. Hello, welcome back. Smells fantastic in here. We have made these beautiful pan seared and then baked just to perfection steaks. These New York strip steaks that we have rubbed with the most fantastic rub. The recipe is on our website using West Rock coffee. Isn't that so easy and good? And our potatoes, in case you were wondering why I, why I was dancing around with my mitts on, 
we have our fingerling potatoes. You ready for the smoke? Oh my goodness. And then all that moisture from the lid and the steam and it just kind of keeps like continually basting. Look how pretty those are. Aren't they fun? They smell so good. All those colors and you know what's really great? These little black ones right here, they look black when you first cook them and then they turn to this gorgeous like dark purple like eggplant color. They are so pretty on the inside. So all we're going to do is plate. I think that one's the prettiest. We're going to plate our steak. Do a little spoon. Oh, we can't forget the dill. I was just about to spoon our potatoes without stirring in our fresh dill, which is my favorite bite. I just love dill. Look at that. Oh, gosh. Everything about that, just the way that it changes the smells in here. Gorgeous. We're going to spoon these potatoes on this plate and then just top our plate off with like a really great little tossed salad, like a little fresh arugula salad. And that is the easiest. Wasn't that so easy? From beginning to end, piece of cake, great flavor, really pretty meal. I hope you'll try it at home. Love every bite. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Kitchenware is provided by Una Mays. Groceries provided by Harps, Hometown Fresh. Online Elements, sponsored by Fayetteville Farmers Market.